Meeting will come to order. We have a number of items on the agenda today. First, voting on the nominations of Kristen Clark to be Assistant Assist Attorney General for the Civil Rights Division, Todd Kim to serve as Assistant Attorney General for Environment and Natural Resources. Uh, then we'll turn to the legislative agenda, uh, starting with S-228, the Klobuchar-Grassley Merger Filing Fee Modernization Act. We also have added to the agenda, as is the tradition in this committee, three bipartisan bills to help mark Police Week and honor the brave men, men and women who are serving in law enforcement, S-1511, 921, and 1502. Each of these bills is bipartisan. I've listed them on the agenda in consultation with my Republican colleagues. It's my hope we'll be able to conclude today's markup by advancing these bills out of the committee in a bipartisan fashion. Finally, we have five nominees who are listed for the first time today. Judge Kitanya Brown Jackson to serve on the D.C. Circuit, Candace Jackson Akumi to serve on the Seventh Circuit, Julian Niels on the District of New Jersey, Judge Zahid Qureshi to the District of New Jersey, Regina Rodriguez on the District of Colorado. We will follow the uh, standard practice that my Republican predecessors followed. We will first discuss and vote on the nominees and then turn to the bills. I know there's been a great deal of interest in discussing Ms. Clark's nomination, but I think uh, most of the uh, thoughts have been expressed in her hearing. I won't go through all of them today, but I will make it sh uh, clear that we, uh, anyone who wants to speak on Ms. Clark's nomination will have the opportunity to do so. I would ask all members, out of respect to their fellow members, to confine their remarks to 10 minutes or less so that we can all have a chance to speak in light of the fact that there is a roll call vote later this morning on the floor. I will adhere to the same standard myself. Ms. Clark has the breadth and depth of civil rights experience needed to revitalize the Civil Rights Division at this critical time. She's a veteran of the division's sections, having served as trial attorney in the voting section, section and prosecutor in the criminal section during George W. Bush's administration. Ms. Clark has also led the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund's Historic Political Participation Group. She led the New York State Attorney General's Civil Rights Bureau and its nascent Religious Liberty Initiative. She has led an, another of the nation's preeminent civil rights organizations, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law, through a period of innovation in tackling some of the most difficult civil rights challenges, including confronting the white supremacist hate crimes and online hate. Ms. Clark has demonstrated expertise and commitment to faithfully executing the law in all of these roles. She has earned the support from five former Assistant Attorney Generals of the Civil Rights Division of both political parties. Her nomination is also supported by a bipartisan group of 59 former senior DOJ officials and U.S. attorneys and over 70 former state attorneys general, again, on a bipartisan basis. Throughout her 20-year legal career, Ms. Clark has forged relationships with federal, state, and local law enforcement, demonstrated by her strong support by the major city's chiefs, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement, women in federal law enforcement, the Hispanic American police commanders, our 40, over 40 prominent police chiefs and sheriffs, and Sheriff David Mahoney, who this month stepped down as president of the National Sheriff's Association. She has experience as a federal prosecutor, long-standing ties to law enforcement. She's uniquely positioned to take this, this uh, assignment of leadership. There have been many claims that have been raised against her. I think most of them are not grounded in fact, and many are an exaggeration. There's no point in relitigating all those at this moment, although I'll be prepared to use any remaining time to return to them. Are we running the clock, is it? The clock started and then stopped. I'm the five judicial nominees on the agenda will be held over. Uh, I mentioned earlier a 10 minute uh, limit to my remarks and the clock was running at the time, now it started over. So I'm gonna make these remarks very brief. I do wanna say a word about Todd Kim. He is a leader uh, in, in, in experienced and award-winning appellate litigator with significant expertise in environment and natural resources law. He began his career as a nonpartisan career lawyer at ENRD, worked for Democratic and Republican presidents, most of the time under the George W. Bush administration. A large number of environmental law experts who don't often agree on much all agree that Mr. Kim's the right person for this job. 
In addition, he has the support of former C senior ENRD officials from both parties who have said that it's strong belief that he's supremely qualified for this position. He served as District of Columbia's first Solicitor General for over a decade. He's worked on cases with State Attorneys General and Solicitors General and has a deep knowledge base of the subject. Uh, I apologize, now the clock is running. It appears that I used somewhere less than six minutes in my opening statement. I'll turn to Ranking Member Grassley. Uh, 